Szanowni Państwo, witam wszystkich bardzo serdecznie na czwartej... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth international conference devoted to the protection from electromagnetic environmental pollution. The subtopic of our today's meeting is the precautionary principle in practice. Before I start off with my introduction, I would like to bid warm welcome to all of you. My warm welcome goes to Professor Andrzej Kulik, who is the deputy mayor of the city of Krakow. I'd like to express my gratitude for Edward Podremski, the councillor of the city of Krakow, who has kindly agreed to join us here, although we were expecting more people from the city council. But I'd like to address all of you, the representatives of the local authorities, members of the parliament, diplomatic services. Well, warm welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. And because we have a tight schedule, may I now ask Mr. Kulik, the Deputy Mayor of the City of Krakow, to officially open the conference. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the seat of the local authorities of Krakow. Welcome to Krakow. I'm so very happy that uh, many distinguished guests decided to join us here and share their reflections on this important topic. It's uh, really a great pleasure to see so many familiar faces and so many valuable figures here. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, it goes without saying that the civilizational progress is uh, something we all desire. However, it changes our environment, it makes our life easier, but this comes with a lot of side effects and side events that we do not always uh, predict and we do not always know all about. For instance, cancer is now treated as one of the civilizational diseases and this demonstrates how civilization on one hand brings a lot of desirable progress, but on the other hand, the same civilizational progress may trigger a number of risks and threats. That is why the reflection on what is going on or what we need to avoid is very apt so that we can benefit from the civilizational progress while being being aware of the risks and threats. As you know perfectly well, the basic area of our discussion is the electromagnetic radiation, uh, which is now present everywhere, including this very hall. And the radiation itself, of course, can be beneficial. RF EMR is something we all need in our everyday activities. But we need to answer the questions about our limits, about the restrictions, and where do we put the line so that we do not pose a risk to human life and the quality of it. Now, the local authorities of Krakow, uh, here's a lot of worrying voices. Many people uh, would complain about the radio frequency electromagnetic radiation causing a number of ailments, a number of uh, uh, health issues. That is why we, as uh, the local authorities, need to be open to discussion. We need to start off on the dialogue because safety and security, whereby public health stemming from it, is one of the most important values that we need to safeguard. That is why I'd like to thank everybody who has joined us here. I understand you're here to make an important contribution to this debate that's been going on for some time in Krakow, but also all across Poland and all across the world. So thank you very much indeed and I hope you have a very fruitful meeting at this fourth international conference. Thank you very much to Mr. Mayor. Proszę Państwa, mamy już czwarte.
this is the fourth international conference, or fourth international forum. We uh, had four important topics, the citizens' rights, protection of children, safe limits, and today we will be talking about the precautionary principle. The uh, precautionary principle is an ethical principle which says that if it if there is a probable, yet not very well researched, uh, risk of a new te te technology, it's better not to introduce it rather than risk potential adverse consequences. Under the Polish law, in the environmental protection law, the precautionary principle is actually expressed verbatim in the environmental legislation. And it goes on and saying, if you take on activities whose negative impact on the environment is not well recognized yet, you are obliged obliged to adopt the uh, precautionary principle and to take all the precautionary measures. Now, the precautionary principle in practice means that the activities aiming at uh, safeguarding and eliminating risk to human health and environment may only be adapted or may be adapted even if there are no scientific evidence concerning the existence or the scope of the threat. The precautionary measure must be taken under such circumstances as it is impossible to eliminate the risk for human life and health. Such risks and threats may stem from the proposed regulations or from the fact that those regulations are failed to be implemented. And so as we want to protect natural environment against radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, we need to attach a lot of importance to precautionary principle in Poland. We've had a number of discussions on that and uh, there is a lot of controversy between the operators and the citizens. Due to our experience, in Krakow, citizens have clearly uh, spoken their mind, although they do not have uh, yet reached what they should have been guaranteed for. That's why we need to listen closely to the information coming from all over the world, which confirm our worries. And so, on the 24th of March in the USA, Portland local authorities express uh, their opposition against 5G network installation across Portland. And this was actually the mayor of the city who supported that. On the 22nd of March in Florence, Italy, the precautionary principle was adopted in practice as the local authority banned 5G network across Florence as it expressed its view on the fact that this network has not yet been uh, appropriately researched. And so, on the 28th of March in Italy, one of the uh, districts of Rome voted against 5G. And then on the 25th of March in Russia, the military department uh, declined frequency transfer onto 5G network. On the 31st of March in Belgium, the Belgian Ministry for the Environment expressed their view that Brussels is halting its plan on 5G implementation, saying that the a uh, Brussels population are no guinea pigs and we cannot be selling their health. On the 4th of April, Germany signed a petition trying to force the German Bundestag onto the debate on 5G. In April, the Dutch parliamentary members insisted on radiation uh, studies to uh, be uh, implemented before 5G is given green light to. And again, in California, in April, San Francisco's decision was upheld whereby the telecoms operators must uh, gain valid licenses before installing the infrastructure. In Switzerland, in April, the local population adopted a resolution on the moratorium on 5G, whereby the installation was halted until the release of the environmental report. And then on the 10th of April, Geneva adopted a 5G moratorium, uh, calling for more research and calling for the WHO uh, this decision on independent research into 5G. In April 2019 again, Claude Edwards from the UN concluded in the report on 5G saying that 5G network starts to like an orphan 
whoever listens to the truth about 5G is now trying to avoid it. The domino effect is in full swing and uh, many cities and countries are now launching 5G. When in May 2010, the Polish parliament received the governmental telecoms draft law for reading, we were counting on the MPs knowledge and we were counting on their knowing better. The ministry uh, charged the Ministry of Communication with the, the task to draft the so-called white paper and the, report, uh, and the report from the Ministry on the 5G environmental impact, which uh, was uh, drafted by the Institute in Łódź, was kept secret and it was only released after the voting in the Parliament. The upper chamber of the Polish uh, Parliament uh, only uh, put forward some editorial amendments and the President signed the new law on the 6th of September. In this way, we are now the second country in the world, just after South Korea, to implement 5G technology. The Polish government wants to make a showcase of it. We simply want to be better than other countries. But those countries would never want to compete on that pace. They are adopting the wait and see positions. They don't want to be the guinea pigs themselves. There are no uh, scientific evidence to confirm that 5G is safe. There is no research to confirm that any of the existing network is safe, be 2G, 3G or 4G. Since we've uh, moved from our landline into smartphones, it was us, the human beings, that are now causing high emission of um, um, electromagnetic radiation. Of course, in our natural environment, we are still exposed to radiation, but none of us would believe that it's safe to stay out in X-rays or a solar ray for a number of hours non-stop. This mega new uh, telecoms law is bad news for two reasons. First of all, the Polish state is not taking care of the people who are sensitive to radiation and in this, in this way those people are excluded from public zone. Now, if the entire population is exposed to electromagnetic radiation, the entire population will suffer very soon. There are some scientific opinions out that negate the um, um, negative impact of the electromagnetic radiation and that includes the names of the authors of the white paper, but still, even there, on page 66 of the white paper, we read as follows. We should take into account that sometimes, even in scientific publications, we have non-objective interpretation of the results, or what they publish is the experiments that are, are carried out with, according to a wrong methodology. So, of course, we have many doubts. There are some professors that would not be uh, willing to do what the politicians would require, require them to do. Professor Klonowski decided to negate this approach and he wrote about the Jagiellonian University report for the Ministry of Telecoms, and I quote, uh, as I am a scientist and I'm bound by the ethical code, I'd like to express my urgent protest against the report. This report has been uploaded to the website of the ministry and it's full of uh, uh, facts that are not true, half-truths, and then if non-specialist audience reads this report on the ministry uh, pages, people are going to believe that these theses are actually true. Now, this report is then quoted in the white paper. And another name, Halina Bramczyk from the Łódź Polytechnical University published an article in Pausa whereby she says that scientists have to bear uh, ethical obligation and authority. Well, in the context of large financial sources coming from uh, international cooperation, we may arrive at a situation of a conflict of interest because large telecom operators are very happy to uh, fund those scientific research that support their concepts. We need to look into well-researched and not so well-researched health consequences of electric uh, radiation and we must treat it as absolute priority. Now, the Social Institute developed a warning report 
entitled Is this white book truly white? Counting that the President of the Republic of Poland, Andrzej Duda, will actually read it before uh, accepting the law. The development of 2G, 3G or 4G network was initially treated as a priority for the entire population because obviously we understood that it's necessary to enhance communication. 4G is now available to 99.8% of Polish population. But Poles will pay through the nose for the 5G network. It's very important that we uh, come up with appropriate cost comparison because there is a number of important costs charged to the user. If we use 5G network, the user will have to purchase a new piece of equipment that will not come cheaply. According to the main office for statistics at the end of 2017, Polish population had 52.9 million active SIM cards. Now, if Poles replace just half of those SIM cards when they buy the new 5G smartphones, this will give us 26.5 new devices, even if we pay about 3,000 lotus for those new smartphones. Uh, in the final analysis, this will come in billions of zlotys paid to the telecoms operators, and even more so because we have to come into we have to count the subscription fees that the telecoms are charging. And I'm just quoting uh, Professor Andrychowski from the uh, comments to White Book. Now, this is under the assumption that uh, 5G will only be available to half of the population, but if, according to what Deputy Minister Book is saying, if we are all to enjoy 5G network access, Poles will pay for it with about 200 billion zlotys that we will pay to the telecoms operators and uh, device uh, providers. And then scientific research is challenging the safety of chronic exposure to electromagnetic radiation, even so that. And so the citizens find themselves in a very difficult situation. On one hand, we have this huge power of the marketing wheels of all the telecoms whereby we upgrading to new versions including 5G and on the other hand we are all aware of the threats caused by modern technology. The more knowledge we have the more social worries we observe. At this conference ladies and gentlemen we would like to focus on demonstrating to you what good practices are in the field of RF EMR.